Hello traders, this is John Kickletter, Chief Strategist for DailyFX.com. With the FOMC rate decision ahead, there's nothing else to cover, especially considering this is one of the events that we have long waited for, uh, and I say long, not just weeks, I'm talking months, uh, ever since the September rate decision, the last quarterly event in which the uh, Fed had delayed its lift and further reduced its interest rate forecast, sending the market into a period of uncertainty that also saw uh, the dollar hurt uh, considerably due to it. but. Since then, we've seen interest rate expectations really pick up. This has had an impact, especially on the dollar, but it has also had an impact on risk trends, although it's not the impact that we have historically seen in which we would expect higher interest rate expectations or removal of accommodative policy would translate into weakening of the benchmarks like uh, the S&P 500 as you see here. Now this is certainly a high profile piece of event where speculation has uh, significantly increased. There is a high uh, or a very extreme uh, expectation of a rate hike with this event so the assumptions have been set uh, to such a degree that it's actually uh, going to be a skew in the possible outcomes here in terms of market impact. We'll be discussing that today. Uh, but it's also important because this is one of the last major pieces of event risk that the entire global financial community is watching as a possible catalyst, not just for uh, the U.S. equity markets, not just for uh, the dollar, but this is one of those things that can actually impact uh, the global financial structure, risk appetite, uh, universally speaking. So all those various asset classes that we talk about and how they can deviate when not motivated by uh, underlying fundamental desire for safety or for higher return, these markets can all be tapped by this particular catalyst. So for most intents and purposes, this may be the last major piece of event risk on the docket through the end of 2016. So it is time to uh, tune in to this particular release. This rate decision is what we consider to be the quarterly event. All right, comes out 1900 GMT, so do the calculation to what time frame you're in. But this is not just a decision on whether to move the benchmark lending rate here and now. Uh, the quantitative easing uh, questions and uh, deliberations, they're not even on the radar uh, for the time being. They're not going to reduce quantitative easing for a long time into the, uh, into the future. But for now, we are talking about a expectation of a rate hike. So this is as we've said, as seen many times before, a dramatic contrast from what we expect for most other major central banks in the world. They're not even considering a rate hike, nor have they even talked about it, uh, but most of them are employing negative rates, uh, the possibility of future rate cuts, and especially open-ended quantitative easing programs, which the ECB, BOJ, and to a certain extent the Bank of England are all pursuing. This puts the U.S. central bank and the U.S. dollar and U.S. assets in a very unique position and has subsequently translated into a remarkable advance for the U.S. dollar. Now, that being said, this is more important than just that one rate decision. And the importance of this event is magnified significantly, already important, because we've seen things in the past like uh, the taper tantrum, uh, which goes back to June uh, 2013, uh, most notably seen in the emerging markets uh, when, actually we'll go all the way to a monthly chart, we'll go to a weekly chart. Back in June of 2013, the announcement that the Fed was going to back out of its quantitative easing program, not uh, reverse course, not that they're working down their asset purchases, but simply that they're going to level them off and essentially stick with a four plus trillion uh, dollar balance sheet. And that was back in, in June 2013. You can see the impact that it had on emerging markets. It certainly had its impact uh, on U.S. equities, although far more restrained. Uh, it certainly had an impact on treasuries at the time. Here's the TLT Treasury ETF, most popular, most liquid of those ETFs. Uh, major impact there. So we know that this can have an impact when we not necessarily just go for a hawkish move, but when we pull back from accommodation. Now, that was three plus years ago. We've grown acclimated to the reality that uh, normalizing monetary policy is a uh, very clear intent uh, from 
at least the U.S. Uh, we had the December rate hike from the Fed last year, uh, so this would be its anniversary, uh, and the impact was certainly very restrained. It wasn't what you would expect from a rate hike. All right? It gave us a couple of days of rally, and then it just stuck back into its range. So this is not just one of those events in which we are holding our breath for the outcome because there is uh, a, a fence-sitting majority. Instead, there is a very profound lean in expectation. So that's what's going to skew this. This is, as we always ask for fundamental events, very important, but it comes with some uh, certain speculative uh, expectations, and that is going to significantly skew the impact of various scenarios. So, the fact that this is a quarterly event will pl uh, cater to this very nicely, because in quarterly events, we don't just get that rate decision, which we just talked about, we also get an update in forecasts, what the Fed is going to do at its subsequent uh, meetings. Not in a very precise way, it's not like they tell us what they're going to do February 1st and on March 15th, but rather what they're going to do, what they expect to do through 2017 and 2018 in an effort to be more transparent, although that transparency has certainly come at a cost as we've seen, I think, a little bit more confusion and greater speculation than we have clarity and calmness in the market. So that, what we call summary of economic projections, uh, entails a number of things, but the market's primary focus is interest rate forecasts, also called the dot plot, dot plot or also called blue dots. We'll look at that as well. So in this event, first and foremost, I've broken this all down for us. The first consideration is not what's going to happen in the future. It definitely has to focus in on what the Fed is going to do with its benchmark rate here and now. All right, so looking at this, this is my scenario table I'm going to be working with going into this FOMC decision. Uh, the number one consideration is what happens with rates. Now, we've been talking about this pretty consistently over the past week, so it should come as no surprise that the market is fully pricing in a rate hike. All right, that 25 basis point rate hike as you can see here in Fed Funds Futures probability table. Uh, so what this uh, uh, equates to is the probability rises as it goes up this uh, axis, and obviously as we get close in on the uh, December 14th rate decision, you can see that the light green uh, actually equates to the probability of a 25 basis point rate hike at this meeting. The dark green equates to 50 basis points. Now, I consider that highly, highly unlikely that we get a 50 basis point uh, rate hike. This has more to do with just the fact that it is a uh, speculatively dealt uh, instrument, so it can have an, a little bit of overshoot. It also has time premium as well as a couple other things, so that uh, skews the probabilities a bit. The takeaway is that the market is fully expecting a 25 basis point rate hike at this meeting. So, this being priced in, we have a skew from the market. All right? We have assumptions. If the market already expects this to fully be the case, we would presume that they had already hedged or uh, placed their speculative positions in uh, expectation of that outcome. So a rate hike of 25 basis points would be in line with expectations. And anything in line with expectations uh, typically has a more muted response. Not that it has no response, it's just much more muted. It can still be bullish for the U.S. dollar, but the actual follow-through is going to rely more upon the subsequent steps that can build into it, which we'll talk about next. A rate hike from the Fed can also have an impact on risk trends, even though the S&P 500 has been charging higher, despite the fact that we are anticipating this move. Now, I don't think this has a positive influence on the S&P 500. Reason being is, and when I say bullish, bearish, positive, negative, it, it doesn't mean the next five minutes after the event risk. It is ultimately what it does to the markets over the span of days, maybe weeks. The higher interest rate that we're going to get from the U.S. 
uh, is in turn going to impact the cost of capital in the U.S. corporate sector. And we know that the cost of capital is, is exceptionally cheap, which uh, encourages uh, loans and, and an excess uh, of leverage, something that we uh, come back to relatively consistently. The use of leverage is exceptionally high. Why? Because funds are so cheap. I can borrow capital, make a higher rate of return on just going long S&P 500 TTFs, and then pay off the loans because they're still cheap. However, as those loans increase, the cost of the loans increase, uh, this is not as attractive as a uh, vehicle. So people slowly back off of this exposure. Right, so this is a net negative for a market that is already really stretching the bounds of reasonable uh, return expectations versus volatility. Right, this is my uh, risk reward index versus the S&P 500, very simplistic measure of uh, the 10-year government bond yields for the G10 divided by FX volatility because it's a little bit more global. The value aspect versus the price aspect really do not line up very well and it just looks it's looking for a reason to shake up the status quo the uh, complacency that has motivated this exceptional exposure that people are taking so this rate hike is not a positive for equity markets it certainly does stand as a vote of confidence in the US economy but I can't say that that is going to do any good the markets don't really look for much uh, uh, optimism from central banks they're looking more at their their actions, not their forecasts, their sentiment. Uh, they've l long learned to ignore central bank sentiment from the Fed to the ECB to the BOJ. Now, the real impact on a rate decision would come if there were no rate hike. Since it is fully priced in, you would catch the entire market off guard. That would catch me off guard. I don't give uh, anything 100 or 0% probability, uh, but it is profoundly low probability given that the market uh, has made a very clear uh, agenda out of uh, trying to be transparent and to help motivate markets into a position where they're comfortable with the, the normalization. Uh, and they've done pretty well. The markets have uh, aligned with their own forecasts and they've really struggled with this. So if they end up not moving, that is just going to shock uh, markets. That would be extraordinarily bearish for the U.S. dollar. And even though it allows for slightly cheaper access to capital for U.S. risk purposes, it would probably reverberate a little bit louder if they did not hike as kind of a clear sentiment of fear that something is amiss in the market and they can't even muster a 25 base point rate hike because conditions are so unstable that they cannot sustain it, they cannot uh, weather it. That would not be a very good vote of confidence. So it might be a, maybe an immediate short-term reaction, five minutes or so of positive response, maybe even a little bit longer. But ultimately, it will filter down as not a positive thing because it doesn't really uh, push out higher returns. It doesn't significantly reduce volatility or uncertainty. In fact, it contributes to it. I think this is an exceptionally low level of probability, but... Uh, always keep open the, the possibility that the Fed may not hike. If they don't, there are plenty of options that are well positioned uh, for this to uh, react and react abruptly. Euro USD, that bounce off of 105 would turn into a rally from 105, major move back into range. The dollar yen, another of my favorite, uh, that would ultimately see a strong reversal, uh, depending also upon, upon how uh, immediate and how aggressive any kind of risk aversion would come in. If it is dollar selling and risk aversion because it's a, a vote of negative sentiment on the U.S. economy, that would double up on this because it's the yen cross for risk trends and this would sink fast all right this would be the best exposure for that kind of specific outcome although very low probability more likely the Fed actually follows through with its rate hike and then the interest moves forward I will shortcut this for you 
you don't have to pay too much uh, attention to the policy statement, at least not immediately. It will give us a lot to weigh in on. Uh, I have uh, specific concerns that I'm looking for. The concern over, uh, over market excess, so exposure and people's chasing of returns, low inflation concerns, and global financial risks or inst instability. All right. These are all things that I look for, as well as uh, language that is specifically tailored towards uh, the likelihood of further rate hikes in the coming year. But this is better served in another aspect of it. That is that uh, SEP, the, uh, let's see, I have it here. There it is. All right. These, uh, the summary of economic projections has a number of elements to it. Uh, they give us forecasts going out to 2017, 2018, 2019, and longer run for GDP, unemployment, their preferred inflation figure, which is actually the PCE deflator, and Fed funds interest rate expectations. Those Fed fund interest rate expectations forecasts uh, turn out to be what, what is uh, now colloquially called the, the dot plot or the blue dots. Uh, you can see here is very faint probably, but uh, this has become the focus of most traders who are watching interest rates. All right, that is going to be the aspect of this that we should really be looking for at the September uh, SEP update. Their Fed, the Fed funds forecast dropped uh, from 2016 down from two rate hikes in the year to one rate hike. All right, we'll see if they live up to that one rate hike, but as you can see, that's their expectation. That's the market expectation. More interesting now is what happens for 2017 and 2018. That too uh, has seen a significant downgrade in expectations. The forecast for 2017 was dropped by 50 basis points. So now they're only expecting two rate hikes next year. The forecast for 2018 was also lowered by 50 basis, point, uh, basis points, so uh, we would expect another 125 basis points from uh, where we will be at the end of this year if there's one uh, additional rate hike. So this 2017 and 2018 forecast, that is our baseline. That is where we're going to see, is it more dovish, more hawkish? If we see that the forecast is lower, if they're forecasting 25 basis points or only one rate hike next year, that's bearish. If it is s steady, then that is neutral. If it is higher, they actually upgrade their interest rate forecast from two to let's say three or more, that is hawkish. All right. Now, 2017 is the immediate interest because that's the near end of the curve, but also watch 2018. That does have profound influence. So, we have an expectation that there's a 100% probability, according to Fed Funds Futures, that this is going to be a rate hike all right, in December. So the forecast now for 2017 is a assumption of how much interest rate uh, uh, projection is there actually baked into the market. And that will give us an assessment of how strong the reaction will be from the dollar and risk trends. That being said, the next rate decision, the first one in 2017, this is uh, the probability of interest rates compared to now uh, being 25 basis points higher. So essentially pricing in that December rate hike that is already fully there. The probability that we will be more than 25 basis points higher, in other words, if there is a second rate hike in, in, in February, on February 1st, that is now up to about 12% probability. Uh, now back-to-back -back rate hikes is unlikely. Uh, that would be very aggressive, uh, but that kind of pricing in is not going to be zero because the markets will price in a partial probability to reflect uh, expectations of just the curve rising in general. We want to see how aggressive the assumptions are. Now, when we look a little bit further out the curve, I only have uh, probability charts here for December and, and, and February. I will move this out, obviously, after the uh, December rate decision. But I also have a 12-month forecast, a 9-month forecast, a 3-month forecast, a 2-month forecast. Uh, this is essentially where rates will be after that time frame. So as of December of 2017, 12 months forward, the markets expect that second rate hike to be priced in fully. Uh, not just this, uh, this week's rate hike, if it does come, but also 
a subsequent one. We don't fully price it in until late next year. So this is where we're going to look. And a hawkish dot plot would go a long way uh, to lifting those expectations. There is inherently some optimism or hawkishness, even though this is only pr fully pricing in in November, December of next year, that follow-up rate hike, so still going at a very slow pace, essentially once a year, it's still somewhat hawkish. If the Fed hikes rates this time and lowers its forecasts, that is going to come out as being very dovish. Despite the hike, the markets will not care. They have been moving forward in the curve. They've been lifting their expectations going forward. So if they reduce their forecast such that it seems only one rate hike is likely, expect the dollar to drop. It won't drop as hard as if the Fed didn't hike at all, uh, but it will certainly uh, lead to a significant dollar drop. Once again, you can look at the dollar in aggregate or you can pick your poison. Euro USD, I think, is well positioned for such a thing, uh, given the uh, the weight of its support. You can also say that the dollar yen is a possibility as well, because it would have a negative implication uh, for restaurants in general, as it shows a lack or lower confidence of the fundamental themes that motivate uh, po monetary policy. Uh, strong or robust in, uh, growth and, and employment, as well as uh, rising inflation, which is reflective of a healthy economy. So dollar yen ends up, once again, uh, having a better uh, exposure to that kind of outcome. So that is your uh, less dramatic and more likely bearish outcome, although I still think this is a lower probability. I think the higher probability is that the Fed is going to be active, it's going to hike, but it would instead keep that 2017 forecast as is. If they wanted to make a move, they might, uh, let's say, tighten or raise the 2018 forecast to test the waters. In my opinion, this is the most likely outcome um, that uh, we are going to see. Now, this, in my opinion, would still be bearish. Why? Because the markets, even though they're not fully pricing in uh, an additional 50 basis points worth of rate hike in 2017, they're essentially looking at a uh, full probability or full expectation of 25. Uh, they are putting in a, approximately a uh, forecast of an additional 25% of two. All right. So they're not fully there, but nevertheless, keeping that 50 basis point forecast is probably going to be counted as somewhat disappointing, given the strong run that the U.S. dollar has enjoyed uh, leading up to this interest rate decision. So this would be a mild bullish pullback. I would not be as bold as uh, trading the dollar yen unless there was a full-scale risk aversion. I would certainly still consider the Euro, Euro USD well positioned. It's more liquid. It can really respond to monetary policy. Uh, maybe even a pound dollar as it is a little bit more sensitive. You really have to go down to the four hour chart to appreciate the channel that we're working with here. Uh, maybe even enough to force the Aussie USD to break to the upside. However, I wouldn't expect the run to be too strong on a mild dollar bearish outcome. The Kiwi dollar, similar situation, rising wedge. Looking at the daily chart, you can see a little bit better. This is within a broader range. Not a lot of uh, technical levels to work with. Dollar CAD uh, wouldn't probably muster the kind of motivation for a particularly strong break below 131, which is a long-term trend line support. So in that, which is a more likely scenario, a high, the most probable scenario, and one that we are better priced for in current positioning, uh, it is going to generate uh, the least amount of volatility from the markets. It will certainly contribute to medium to long-term trends, but in the short term to medium term, so in the next couple of weeks, it's not going to be the bombastic move for the markets. Now, on the potential that the Fed actually does upgrade its forecast uh, of more than 50 basis points in 2016. That would be considered pretty much outright bullish for the U.S. dollar because it would uh, insinuate that though the, Fed, uh, the markets have been hawkish on the dollar, they probably haven't been hawkish enough. I would expect the dollar 
uh, likes of the dollar CAD to rebound. Uh, this has a nice range to work with. Obviously, you have to take in consideration oil, which is a strong correlation, uh, but that is more capable. Uh, Kiwi dollar and Aussie dollar and their reversals would probably not have a lot of uh, run to them uh, because it's really tough to truly generate uh, significant uh, traction and advancement from the dollar, given how much been, has been assumed, um, but they certainly have potential. Dollar yen on a break to the upside is possible above 116. I wouldn't expect a whole lot of run because I'm still skeptical of, of risk on, and I am certainly skeptical of how far the dollar can uh, run on reasonable uh, reasonable degrees of hawkishness that the Fed can upgrade from here. And it would still be very difficult for the Euro USD to get below 105 and move on to parity, although it seems a lot of the market actually expects this to, ha to happen. So as you can see, this the layout here, the scenario tables are, once again, significantly skewed. This way, they're skewed more towards a more bombastic or aggressive bearish response, although it's a lower probability. Uh, but it's it's going to be somewhat tough to motivate true, strong bullish conviction from the dollar. It can happen, but it's going to be more difficult to muster. The intensity of the move and the follow-through is probably going to be more restrained. Now, we can find other aspects of this, the uh, economic considerations and forecast, Jan Yellen's press conference, but I don't expect those to carry a whole lot of weight compared to uh, the rate decision and the interest rate forecast. I actually decided to run a, a, a poll a little bit earlier on Twitter, and I got quite a few respond, uh, responses. Uh, here it is. What do you think the Fed will do at the Wednesday's quarterly FOMC meeting? Uh, weigh in on rate on the rate move and on the 2017 rate forecast. 18% expect that they're going to hold rates. They're the bears. All right. If if you if you find yourself in this group, you definitely want to look for the best positioned anti-dollar uh, pair. Euro USD, dollar yen are well positioned for that because it would be a strong response. 11% expect that the Fed will hike by 25 basis points and then lower their 2017 forecast of 50 basis point rate hikes uh, worth of rate hikes uh, to something less. Could be 25, could be a fraction, I don't know. Um, but you can see that this is even less than those expecting a hold of rates. Uh, that would be a very awkward statement uh, or a reflection if they decided to do it. Very few people expect it uh, intuitively and I think that makes a lot of sense. Here is where we're split. 36% think that there's going to be a hike and they're going to keep the 27, 14, uh, 27 for, uh, forecast at 50 basis points with the additional rate hikes. 35 expect that it's going to be 25 basis point hike and they're going to increase what they expect in 2017. This is what we are most likely going to look at for the true speculation, for the true impact. And it's, un, it's unclear. There certainly is a stronger reaction uh, for an increase in interest rate forecasts, uh, but the market, uh, if we are running by uh, realistic expectations, the average that you see here, Fed funds futures, it's more likely going to be kept unchanged. Be prepared for these different outcomes and look for opportunities that best exploit that particular scenario. The Euro USD and the dollar yen are definitely at the top of my list. I will also be watching very closely how risk trends respond, especially given how far they have stretched uh, with this incredible run in U.S. shares. Uh, also, uh, treasuries, which have been treated more and more like a speculative asset uh, versus a safe haven asset uh, that uh, people will put money towards when they are looking for ultimate stability. Uh, this, too, is going to be very reactive to this event. All right, so prepare yourself. This is one of the top pieces of event risk left in 2017. It's going to dictate what we have with the coming weeks and months ahead. It's going to reset uh, the conversation around uh, monetary policy, especially the pace for which we can expect the hawkish shift or the normalization shift with 
which other central banks are going to have to follow uh, down that line eventually. So there is a lot in this event risk. It might not be the best trade in the first five minutes. In fact, I'd actually discourage it, as we often do with major event risk. But this will definitely factor into your medium-term trades and the level of activity in trading for the FX and broader financial system uh, in the days and weeks to come. All right, so very important. Make sure you're watching. We'll wrap it up here. We'll do our next strategy uh, soon. Until then, I wish you good luck trading out there.